Martin here from fighthype.com. I'm here with one of the most hardest working men in boxing, Eddie Hearn. Eddie, I see you in New York. I see you then in Peterborough. I see you here. I see you there. Peterborough and Philadelphia. Same. It, you know, <laughs> sounds similar. Um, how do you do it? How do, how do, you, how do you get... I it, mate. I just love it. I love boxing. I love the game. I love watching young fighters progress. I love watching great fights. Sometimes you don't always get them. In Philadelphia last week, we got just a fucking beautiful card where it just gelled and the atmosphere and and that's you know when you leave those, if it's a poor show or ends up being a poor show, I'm really fucking miserable. Do you know what I mean? Because I know it's coming on social media, but you ain't even got to look at social media. I just know. But then when you do something like Philly, it's an, such an amazing feeling as a promoter. But that's what you live for. So you live for those nights and those fights where everything clicks and you feel a million dollars because you put on a great show for the fans. And ultimately, that's how you'll always be judged. Not how hard I work. Oh, wow, he's in Philly this week. Like that. People don't care about that. People care about how good is the fight, how good is the show. So we're only judged on our shows. And when you get a good one, like last Saturday, you're only as good as your last show. And we hope this Saturday, on paper, should be another great show. Next Saturday in Liverpool, I think he's an even better card, to be honest with you. And I think, you know, we hope they all gel and we hope everyone enjoys it. You've just talked about it there. Let's talk about Kate Taylor then. Yeah. Um, phenomenal once again. And it looks like, you know, she's looking to become the Spirit Champion. Talk to me about Kate Taylor and her journey and where she's, where she's got to now. Well, she's, a, she's a really a good example of when you say, how do you do it? People like her inspire me to do it. That sounds a bit cheesy, but like, Without me delivering for her, she can't achieve what she wants to achieve. So seeing her achieve that makes me incredibly proud and makes me very driven to deliver. And that, that works the same for Boatsy or AJ. or like, I want to deliver for these people, especially the ones I have a close relationship with. So watching her grow and watching her achieve her dreams, which is to try and be the undisputed champion, and now to have three of the four belts, well, that's, a, that's an amazing feeling to be a part of that journey. And she... She just, she's such, such an inspiration as an individual. Like, I think in life, I really admire people that are driven. But sometimes, like, I've got unbelievable focus. But I'm also, can be a little bit lazy. And there are days I don't really fancy it, but I do it, you know. And then there are other days where maybe I don't want to talk to people. Or, but she has such a pure focus on what she wants to do. I admire people like that because there is no talking to yourself about oh, I can't do it. Like, that don't even come into it like, I don't believe she wakes up in the morning and goes oh I just can't oh I can't do this today that don't even come into the mindset it's just boom right gear on let's go you know my dad's a bit like that as well and I admire those people because like the drive is incredible you can talk yourself into doing it and sometimes I have to do that you know I've got to fly again to America I can't do this it's like come on son off you go but these people are so obsessed and they're tough to beat those people you know that's why my dad's been so tough to beat in the business over the years and me as well because I'm not quite a Katie level stand Katie Taylor level stand but with that drive you're, you're unbeatable if you've got ability as well and she's got so much ability and it's just great to see her taking the sport to another level people don't really if you get a chance watch the film Katie right it's on iTunes it's on Netflix it's, it's everywhere people don't realise that the reason that women's boxing is in the Olympics is because Katie Taylor campaigned for that Katie Taylor had to have an exhibition bout in front of the IOC to convince them that this sport was worthy of going to the Olympics she changed everything and she's doing it again in the pros so I'm a big fan and hopefully we can get the undisputed fight against Persoon and hopefully that can take place on the AJ card let's talk about this card obviously Charlie Edwards yeah. um, like David Diamante yeah. came out with that know, excellent yeah, introduction yeah, yeah. Um, but he has gone through a journey he has yeah. been a, it's, it's been a serious journey a lot of ups and downs how proud are you of him incredibly proud because I'll be honest like it's a bit reminds me a little bit of the Tony Bellew rise in that they wanted a big shot for so long and I couldn't get it I, I couldn't get Tony a shot and just out of nowhere we got the Macabu fight for the WBC and that changed everything you know with Charlie, I was at a dead end, and out of nowhere, the Rosales fight come out, and he won it, and now we're, we're buzzing. You see the turnout today, you see the story of Charlie Edwards. It's inspiring, it's exciting people, it's getting people behind him, and I'm really proud that he's, you know, he's a WBC world champion. He's defending his title on Saturday, so you know I'm very proud of him. He's got a very tough fight from a guy who's 
just as driven as Charlie was in December and he's got to be on point. Lawrence Acoli said in that press conference, hopefully by the end of the year or to 2020, he wants to be a world champion. How far is he away from that sort of goal? You know, I'd like to see him fight Lebedev next, really. And that's going to be a tough decision for him because it's definitely too early, but he can win that fight. I really believe he can knock Lebedev out, right? But it's just evaluating the risk-reward and saying, do you... Like, Saturday's his 12th fight. He's never boxed anywhere near the levels of Lebedev, Right? But can he win? Yes, 100%, right? Can he lose? Yes. But do you take that risk in your 13th fight? You know, taking that risk and winning will put him to major star leagues for doing that so early, you know? And maybe in two years' time, the WBA champion is, is, a, is a killer. Like, you know, maybe it's another Usyk or something like that. So this is the chance. Sometimes you have to take that chance. A little bit like when AJ boxed uh, Charles Martin. At the time, people were saying it was a big risk. After, when he knocked him out in two rounds, oh, Martin's a joke, you know, blah, blah, blah. But at the time, it was like, it's fight 16. You know, do you go for it? Because once you go for it, there's no turning back. You can't fight Lebedev and then say, oh, I'm going to have an eight-rounder in Liverpool. That's it. You're in deep against world-class fighters. But what Lawrence has always done is learn on the job. But And that's what AJ was doing for Martin, for White, uh, sorry, for Brazil and White. Uh, Molina Klitschko he was having to learn under that pressure which is very difficult to do but you know Lawrence may get the opportunity if he beats a, a Wadi on Saturday to take that Lebedev fight and there isn't really a, a, a right or wrong decision whether he should or shouldn't take it it's just going to be down to his training team whether they want to gamble you know what, you talk about it there, I want to put another sort of fight situation that's very, very similar to that. Anthony Yard and Kovalev yeah. has been called. Yeah. Now, is that the sort of same situation? Like it is maybe very early for Yard, but it maybe has to take the opportunity whilst it's here. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd, Kovalev is a different proposition, in my opinion, to Lebedev. Okay. Although he's towards the end of his career, he is um, definitely on the down slide of his career. The problem with Yard is and this has been why his matchmaking has been poor, they've never boxed anyone even top 15 in the world or with that ability, right? So how do you go from Travis Reese or whatever his name, Reeves, to Kovalev? The answer is you don't. And Frank knows that. Like Frank, for all his you know, downsides, what he does know is he knows boxing and he does know how to develop a fighter to the top. He's been doing it a long time. He knows Yard shouldn't be boxing Kovalev. But unfortunately, they've avoided the domestic route and gone this WBO European. They've kept defending it, and now they find themselves mandatory for Kovalev. So what do you do? If he don't take the fight, he's going to look terrible, and everyone's going to say, what are you doing? What has been the point? Because he says, oh, we're not worried about the British domestic, Jose Burton, who cares about that? We're going down the WBO route, right? Well, you've done it, and now you're there. So take the fight. You, know, you can't just listen to a trainer saying, well, that fight's got to be at Arsenal with us as the A-side or it ain't happening. You might as well just say, we're not taking the fight. Do you know what I mean? So we'll see. We'll see what they do. I don't, you know, I don't necessarily even blame them for not taking the fight. But after everything they've said and done, they should take the fight. Because you can't say, we're going down the world ranking routes instead and then get there and get your shot and then say no. But this is where they should have boxed Jose Burton. Joshua Boatze. And if you can beat those guys, then you're ready for Kovalev. So if he doesn't take that fight, do you reckon his popularity will go down? get crushed. Get, it, it, it will kill his profile and it will kill his credibility. And I, don't, I, don't even, I won't even blame Tunde and Yard because they haven't had the right fights. But they're there. And they've said this is what they want to do. So now they're going to have to do it. Obviously, talking about Yard, we've got to talk about Boatsy. Was there any sort of offers put forward from yourself or from them? Well, I know they, did, they, didn't, want, they didn't want the fight yet, but was there any offers from yourself for that fight? Not, not recently. Probably six months ago, eight months ago, something like that. It was, it was offered. Um, I believe they pulled out with the board to, for that fight to be put forward for the British title. They don't want that fight. But if you're not going to fight Boatsy, how are you going to fight Kovalev? You know, so like the best time to get Boatsy is now. He ain't going to be beaten in five or six fights' time. So now's the chance. And actually, Yard should have probably jumped in and boxed uh, Boatsy now. But listen, if he beats, Ko I hope he beats Kovalev. Because if he beats Kovalev, the, the uh, Yard fight, the uh, Boatsy fight, is a massive pay-per-view fight in the UK. And 
one day it will, it will be a big fight whatever happens but you know Boazzi for me and again it ain't disrespect to Yard or to Tunde I, I like anti Yard I like the energy they have you know I don't know how good he is because we haven't had a chance to see that yet I just know Boazzi's on another level and they will say Yard's on another level and I will say Boazzi's on another level and hopefully one day we find out who's right Obviously he's fighting for the British title um, are you on are you on track yes we are because the first the first aim is to win the British title right which he's got a chance to do on Saturday um, after that we're going to be moving up the world rankings. Hopefully, maybe have another domestic fight as well. I'd like him to box on the AJ card on MSG uh, against a top 15 opponent. I just think he's so good. Problem is, his last three fights have all been first round KOs. So, and, I, and, and without disrespecting Liam Conroy, who is on a great run, I think this fight's over in three rounds because he's just he's so vicious. And as soon as he hurts you, it's over. So, the problem is going to be getting him the rounds, and uh, he's just improving every time.